Top five biggest surprises the last five to ten years. Got now, you. Cody, would you want to start or do you want me to start? I'm going to start. All right. I'm going to start. So, at number five, he had back-to-back Heisman winners. Or he had two out of three Heisman winners. He had multiple college football playoff berths. And he up and left. Lincoln Riley going from blue blood to blue blood, leaving Oklahoma to go to USC is my number five biggest surprise. I feel like he was set up for success. He had the run of the place at Oklahoma. He literally could do no wrong there. I think he was set up for the long term after Coach Stoops was there. Um, he was like he was recruiting at a high level. He had Caleb Williams in the fold. He had all those receivers coming back. He had a ton of talent. Um that, to me, obviously I'm an Oklahoma fan, so I'm biased or sensitive to this, but um, Lincoln Riley going from Oklahoma to USC in a time where USC was kind of mired in being eh. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that that was a big move for me, a big surprise to me. That's a good one. That's a good one. That was when they had a Clay Helton, too. They were down bad. USC was down bad. They needed a savior, and that being Lincoln Riley. I understand you being an Oklahoma fan. That's a little touchy. And, and, you know, I'm proud of you for speaking – on that and going through that without any, you know, tears or emotion. I'm really proud of you, Cody, for doing that. I love it. Well, what's your number four? My number four. Um, I talked about it as the biggest disappointments. I'm going to bring it up again. Um, Florida, all the recruiting advantages of location and conference. They've had three double digit winning seasons in the last 10 years. That's wow. unreal. That is not okay. The last three seasons, just so you're aware, the last three seasons, Six and seven, six and seven, eight and four. Florida, what are we doing, man? What are we doing? You sprinkle in a four and seven, a four and eight, a seven and five, a nine and four in those 10 years. Guys, like Florida Gators, what? Like it blows my mind. How are we not good? Anyway, number four, Florida, not being good. That's so funny. They made the biggest letdowns list and the biggest surprises list for Mr. (laughs) Cody Oaks. I love that. Number three. Number three. Okay. This is the most recent one, and I'm probably sure that they're on your list too. But last year, TCU picked to finish eighth in the Big 12. Quarterback gets injured early in the season. Not only do they go to the Big 12 championship undefeated, ultimately they end up losing in one of the craziest games of the year. Yeah. And make it to the national championship. Pick to finish eighth in your conference and you go undefeated and play for the national championship. Sonny Dykes, that was one of the greatest coaching jobs I've ever seen, especially with a backup quarterback. They had tons of speed. They did a great job on defense. They had the Jim Thorpe Award winner on defense. That TCU team will go down as one of my top surprises probably in the last 25 to 30 years. So that's my number three. Number two. Number two. He was the second freshman ever to win the national cha- ever to win the Heisman. He also won the national championship that year. Jameis Winston taking Florida State in 2013, undefeated and winning the national championship over a really scrappy Auburn team that seemed like they were destined to win it. They had the kick six against Bama. They had the tip hail mary against Georgia. Auburn was winning the entire game. Jameis Winston kind of had had like not his best game leading up to that point. Leads the comeback. They get the big kick return to take the lead in the fourth quarter. So really impressed by that. Biggest Second biggest surprise to me in the last 10 years was James Winston as a freshman, not only winning the Heisman, but also taking Florida State to the national championship. That's a good one. That's a good one. That was a really fun year, too, at the Rose Bowl, BCS. That was one of the last years for BCS. I love it. And what's your number one biggest surprise the last five to ten years for Cody Oaks? So – with Jameis Winston winning the Heisman his freshman year in 2013, in 2014, there was a team that everyone thought was going to win the national championship. It was supposed to be them versus Alabama, and finally the West Coast was going to get a national championship, but Oregon choked against Ohio State. And to me, Oregon, with Marcus Mariota, the Heisman Trophy winner, all the blur speed that they had on the edges and at running back, The defense was good that year. Them losing to Ohio State to me and not winning the national championship in 2014 was to me 
the biggest surprise of the last 10 years. Some people will disagree with me. To me, that was the best Oregon team we've ever seen. Um, and them losing that game was like, I would like when they beat Florida state, the way they beat Florida state, the defending national mm. champs. And we saw Alabama get beat by Ohio state. To me, it was a done deal. I was already getting ready to buy my Oregon national championship shirt. And for some reason, Ohio state debuted him. Zeke Elliott went over 200 and Cardell Jones led them to the natty. So that to me was the biggest surprise in the last 10 years. Yeah, especially Ohio State, too, if you remember. They barely squeaked into the college football playoff. Most team, most people said they shouldn't have been in. It should have been either TCU or Baylor at the time. They squeaked yep. in with a backup quarterback, Cardell Jones. They beat Alabama, and then they beat Oregon. Uh, third string quarterback. He was third a third string quarterback. That's crazy. That is crazy. Was Braxton Miller the first? Was Braxton Miller, and then it was JT Barrett? Miller and, and JT Barrett came in when Braxton Miller got hurt. Wow. That's insane. Yep. That was a great, great top five, Cody Oaks. Can't complain. Great top five. Um, my top five, it, it, it's weird. You mentioned some of my, like, you, you, we only have one that's similar, but you mentioned the other side of, and I'll, I'll explain with my top five here. It's so, it's kind of crazy how it's similar. At number five, I think the 2013 Auburn football team was a pretty big surprise for me. You mentioned the I other side being Florida State. I mean, this team was full of surprises. If you remember, uh, back in 2012 in December, they let go of Gene Shiznik or Shizik. Um, he was terminated. First year head coach with Gus Malzahn. Uh, they weren't even selected in the preseason AP Top 25. They had no receiving votes at all. Um, I mean, this team was, I thought, one of the most underrated quarterbacks, I think, in the SEC, Nick Marshall. I was a big fan of Nick Marshall. Uh, Trey Mason, our running back. Sammy Coates, Ricardo Lewis. Juan Bray, C.J. Uzma, D. Ford was a stud for him, too, defensively. Um, but alongside the surprises of them making the national championship, you mentioned the kick six against Alabama. That was a surprise. But before that, the prayer at Jordan-Hare against 25 Georgia was one of my favorite plays in the last five to ten years. I just remember watching that game. There's no way. Like, there's no way. The tip off of the defenders collide. And Ricardo Lewis catches it, and they score in a must win because earlier that year they lost to LSU. They won like six or seven straight games after that. Um, and it's crazy. The Georgia play happened, Prayer and Jordan Hare, which I forgot this actually happened. Two weeks later, they had a bye week. Two weeks later, the kick six happened against Alabama. And they ended up beating – yeah, exactly. They ended up beating uh, number five Missouri. They ended up going to the national championship. But that team was super fun to watch. I just remember Nick Marshall – the triple option he had on the left side against Alabama, he fakes the pitch and throws it over the top to Sammy Coates. Just absolutely. Throws the, ugliest, throws the ugliest spiral of all time. <laughs> yeah, it's the ugliest spiral, but it gets there. Number tw number five for me is a 2013 Auburn football team. At number four, I'm going the legend, the mailman, Stetson Bennett the fourth. The story of this kid. I mean, he's a walk-on. He walks on to Georgia. Um, he's like the third string, doesn't really play much, leaves Georgia, goes Juco, then gets recruited by Georgia once again to come back, but this time on scholarship, and goes on to win two national championships. The story of this guy, undersized, I mean, just discipline, hell of an arm. And we saw last week in the L.A. Rams, when you and me have been preaching this for a while, Stetson Bennett needs to get drafted. He's going to be a guy, I think he's going to be a guy in the league for a while because he's so He's played a lot of snaps. We've seen guys like, you know, Trey Lance, not, which I actually thought this was crazy. Do you know that Trey Lance has only played, he's only thrown 400 passes in his whole career, his entire life? Isn't that crazy? High school, college, and NFL, he's only thrown 400 passes. Yep. It's insane. So Stetson Bennett, Stetson Bennett, the fourth, you are my fourth biggest surprise the last five to 10 years. Great choice. Thank you. Oh my God, I'm winded. At number three, uh, I agree with you on this one. You mentioned them. You're there in number three, too. TCU in 2022, what they did last year was incredible. Max Duggan, I um, mean, stepping up the way he did. Uh, and the rest is history. You mentioned that before. Um, big win. I was at that game against Michigan, one of the craziest games I think I've ever been to. It was cool being up in the media press box because half, half the arena was TCU. Half the arena was Michigan. And it was like when something happened for TCU, they would all stand. And then right after Michigan, just super back and forth. But I was so shocked on how TCU just outcoached them flat out. 
They couldn't do anything against that three three five. Um, JJ McCarthy looked looked terrible. He, he looked uncomfortable. They made a bunch of mistakes, and I mean, I'm gonna be honest. He he did not look good. I mean, they needed him most when the running game wasn't present and he couldn't perform. But again, Michigan this year, we'll talk about him in our big our Big Ten preview. Number two, I'm gonna go Tua Tagovailoa. 2018 National Championship, second half versus Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I forgot Jalen Hurts, three of eight, 21 yards passing in the first half is absolutely ridiculous. They were down 13-0, and we remember watching that game. I thought it was over. True freshman coming in the National Championship game, there's no way. Leads the charge to 22nd half points, 14 to 24, 166 yards. Three touchdowns, one interception, and of course, on second and twenty-six in overtime, three-step drop. Look, look middle, look off the safety, looks left. Who does he see? Devontae Smith, forty-one yard yeah. touchdown pass, bank dime. Devontae Smith's only catch that would also propel him to be the Heisman as well. Tilla Tagovailoa, you are my second biggest surprise last five to ten years. I'm going to go to you, Cody. You remember watching that game? You thought there's no way in hell two was going to come in here. The game was over, bro. It was over. Every, yeah. Like, Jake Fromm had Georgia turned up. Because even when Alabama did score, Georgia came right back and threw, like, an 80-yard bomb to, like, Miko mm-hmm. Hardman. And it was like, oh, like, okay, game, like, cool. Game's over. Like, <laughs> And... Tua willed his team back, bro. Like that kid, mm. he took some shots and he stood in the pocket and just delivered against a really, really good Georgia team in mm. Georgia. That was at the the Mercedes Benz Superdome in Atlanta. So yeah, um, that was impressive. So um, and that throw that he made on second and twenty six, like I don't think people realize how perfect of a throw that is because throwing against cover two to the boundary can be really, really difficult. But he did such a good job of holding the safety on the hash and making that throw, and Devontae Smith was running wide open. So On second and 26 is absolutely ridiculous. At number one, my biggest surprise the last five to ten years, Cody, it's getting cold because this guy, Joe Burr, Joe Burrow, I think, is the biggest surprise in the last five to ten years. This guy was the 10th ranked player in Ohio. He goes to Ohio State. He sits on the bench for four years behind guys like JT Barrett, Cardell Jones, Dwayne Haskins, rest in peace, etc. He played in seven games in 2016 and 2017. Cody, he only threw two touchdown passes, 287 yards, and rushed for a touchdown. He transfers May of 2018 to LSU, plays 13 games his first year, throws for 2,900 yards, 16 touchdowns. Cody, you're a quarterback guy, 2,900 yards, 16 touchdowns. That's a good year. It's okay. That's a good year. Okay, well, he said. In this day and age, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Heading into his senior year, his last year of eligibility, he was a projected seventh-round pick. In 2019, he plays 15 games. Throws for 5,600 yards on 76% passing, 60 touchdowns, wins the Heisman, wins the national championship. On the greatest team, I will say this, on the greatest team of all time, college football, 2019 LSU. Greatest team all time. Come on, dude. From top to bottom, that team was nuts, and he's thriving in the NFL. Joe Burrow, you're my biggest surprise last five to ten years. Great pick. We can argue best teams of all time later. (laughs) Dude, that sucks because you're, you've been around, you're older than me. So you're like, oh, I've seen, you know, I've seen 2000 Miami or I've seen this or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I was just born. Like, I do not remember. I get, okay. For me, if I had to contend with the team, I'd say the Miami team, I would say, uh, I mean, Clemson, when they won that one year was pretty good. Alabama, when they had Mac Jones, a quarterback, that team was loaded too. Um, I'm trying to think of some other teams that are on the top of my head. USC, maybe when they 2004. I'll give you two teams that would contend: 2004, 2005 USC, and 2001 Miami. Fair enough. Those, Fair are, enough. those are the two. Those okay. Are, those cool. are the two 
Like, and I might throw in maybe 2020 Alabama. 2020 Alabama was pretty freaking good. Yeah, right after LSU too, which I think kind of sucked for him because we saw how good LSU was that year before. And with COVID, we didn't really right. see a full year <laughs> right. of Alabama. Right. Yeah, exactly. 